I am bringing you another pet painting, but I'm not going to be talking about the painting today because it'd be really boring if I did that for a third time. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to be talking about something that's hopefully a little bit more interesting. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. On my channel before, I've been a really big advocate for using references. You just use reference photos, draw what you see, not what you know. I even made a whole video dedicated about it. And I guess you could consider this a part two to that if you want. <laughs> I think it was on that video. I got a comment asking if they should study realism, even though they're an illustrator, and like if it's even an important thing to do. So I'm here to tell you it is. It's a very important thing to do. I can definitely relate to that question though, because for the longest time I didn't see the point in studying things from real life when I knew I was just going to stylize them. So hopefully I can talk about that and help clear things up for you if you're a little confused. So I guess the whole summary of this video, if I had to put it in one sentence, is that studying realism can help you stylize things correctly. And I don't think a lot of illustrators, at least younger artists, they don't know what it means to stylize something correctly. And so to give an example, I guess I'll talk about something I did recently, which is the 100 heads challenge, which I feel like I'm beginning to mention in every video now. <laughs> but basically, like, I know what a human face looks like, right? Like, I, I, I live with people, I see a face every day. It's nothing nothing fancy. But then even so, when I was drawing it, there's a lot that I would forget about faces because I never really sat down and broke down the structure of a human face before. And so when I would go to color my illustrations, when it came to like shading and highlights to define the facial structure a little bit more, I kind of just fucking went for it and made things up. <laughs> But now, a lot of you guys have even commented on my mo more recent videos saying that you've noticed it too. Ever since I've studied facial structures, the way I've, I've been drawing faces has improved a lot. And if you look at my more recent art, it's still very illustrative. It's still very much within my style. And that's kind of what I mean by being able to stylize things properly. Because now, like, even though it's in my style, it reads more how I want it to read, I guess you could say. So why does studying realism help you with art, even if it's not realism? I'm glad you asked me because that's what I wrote in my script. <laughs> When you study realism, so if, if you take drawing in like an illustration, for example, like I know a lot of you guys are illustrators, you like to make super kawaii anime art because it's the same. <laughs> if you are drawing, let's say, an original character that you have, it's very much just from your head. It's what you know in your mind. You just, you're, you're kind of just going for it. But then if you're like studying from a photograph, like you have something to focus on and you have something to look at and something to figure out how to break things down. Many artists use guidelines, including myself, hello. I'd very re much recommend using guidelines. It's very rare for an artist to just put pen to paper and just start drawing a body with like no base sketch. There's always that like underlying like arrangement of shapes that forms a body. When you study realism, if even if it's not like a refined painting or anything, studying realism, even if it's just a sketch, can really help you just figure out what sorts of shapes you see in something and then when you stylize them, you can choose which shapes to exaggerate. Sometimes, depending on what you're drawing, you can get rid of certain shapes. And when you study realism, it just helps you break things down more. And I know I keep talking about like drawing people a lot because that's what I do. I draw a lot of people. <laughs> but this applies to things that aren't even people. Like I guess in this video, as I'm painting a cat, something that I've had a lot less practice in in the past is drawing animals. And for the longest time, I had no idea how to draw animals within my art style. And so I, at some, I don't remember which sketchbook it is, but a few sketchbooks ago, I would have like spread and spreads of just me sketching animals and trying to figure out the structure of an animal. Because I can guess what a cat looks like, and I, I know what a cat looks like in my head. Like, it's, it's a little furry ball, it's got ears, four legs, and a tail. Boom. It's a cat. <laughs> but when you go to draw an actual cat, there's a lot of details that you don't normally think about, I guess. When it comes to a cat, you don't really know exactly how the anatomy of a cat works. You don't know how the legs connect to the body. You don't know the structure behind the tail. You don't know, like, the bones of the foot. And you don't need to know, like, fancy names or anything, but you need to know more of, like, what goes where and kind of why and, like, what the purpose behind certain aspects are. Like, here's a fun fact. Cat 
cross their back legs it looks like they're walking on their toes and it's like an evolutionary thing so when they're walking on their toes it makes it easier for them to like hunt and sneak up on prey and stuff like compared to a dog dogs don't really do that unless they're like made to assist a human to hunt cats are more predators than dogs and so it helps them to just like be quieter and sneak around and stuff and so the heel of the cat is actually a lot closer to their tail than the floor and that would be something to keep in mind when you're drawing cats their heels are all the way in the air <laughs> and just stuff like that kind of like learning why things are the way that they are can be a big help in stylizing things so if we take like more of a traditionally western style of cartoon i would say that that's a lot more stylized than let's say like anime if you want to have like a super stylized art style like that it can really help you i guess kind of prioritize certain things because if you are stylizing something not everything that you draw is necessary. Like if you're drawing a hand and you're learning to stylize a hand, it's important to know like the joints of a hand, how a hand moves, how a hand bends. You wouldn't necessarily need to draw like every wrinkle in the hand though. And so then that way by studying, you will know what parts to keep in your style and what parts to get rid of. When I previously talked about drawing from reference photos, I drew it more in my style. Like in that video, I was studying muscles, but I drew it more like in my style, I guess. And I think that that is the instinct for a lot of people when they do draw from references, they usually try to translate it into their art style. But the only reason that I'm able to do that is because in the past I've copied reference photos more directly and I've studied more like how the photo actually is rather than my own artistic interpretation of it I guess you could say <laughs> just try and draw a picture just just do it just, just a, a photograph a realistic photograph whatever you want if you ever want to learn to draw something new again it doesn't have to even be anything like big or extravagant it could just be like a spread in your sketchbook if you want to learn to draw something new draw more realistic pictures of that and then try and translate it into your art style. I guess you can say it's kind of like baking a cake. Like if you want to be a baker, you would probably follow another recipe first and try and replicate that exactly to make a cake. And then as you improve with your baking skills, you can start to form your own recipes in your own measurements and everything and kind of make it your own. It's the same thing with art. But aside from breaking things down into like basic shapes and helping you stylize things, it actually can help teach you a lot of things outside of that. Like one thing it can help you improve on is just your- I don't know what this skill is in art, but I know it's a thing. Just the ability to see something and put it on paper. Like your hand-eye coordination that you use in your art from when you look at something and you put it down on your paper can help improve that skill. That's something else that it can help you with, but it can also help you with things like practicing perspective and adding depth to your drawing and practicing different materials and textures and just things like that. And those are all things that you would probably use in your more stylized art. I mentioned recently in a video that I want to practice drawing different like clothing materials. I believe it was in my Edward Edward video, but I wanted to make a video where I practice drawing different clothing types like leather, like uh, cotton, like silk, spandex, stuff like that. And just practice really capturing how a material looks. Is this guy blowing leaves while I'm filming? That's disrespectful. And in the future, when that video does come, I'll be using actual photographs to try and get that, or maybe even looking at some of the clothes that I own. Of course, I don't own all the materials in the world, but probably just whatever I can. And that's another thing too. It's always best to be able to take your own reference photos if you can, because not only can you make them exactly how you need them to be, but you can also get like multiple different angles of the same thing. It's just a lot more customizable. And it's even better if you can like actually stay there and draw the thing rather than from a photograph. But of course, that's not always an option, so studying from a photograph is just fine. And even if you can't take them yourself, there are plenty of photos available. I usually use Pinterest, but there are other places. You can probably find them on just Google Images, but also places like Instagram, Twitter, probably even here on YouTube. But really, there's a lot to be gained from studying realism, even as an illustrator. And, <laughs> guess you're gonna hate me. <laughs> in my upcoming webcomic that's not out yet. <laughs> Which is my new catchphrase. Of course, there's a lot that you need to know how to draw when you're drawing a comic. And I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's unrealistic for 
anyone to expect an artist to just be able to draw those things from memory without using reference photos. But let's talk about like world building and stuff. I get a lot of comments of people asking like how to write a story and how to do world building, how to like fit your characters into your world. That's a whole other topic, but one tip that I can give right now is to study environments around you. A big part of creating a story is the atmosphere. You need to know what world your character lives in because definitely like what world they live in will not only impact the story but also the characters because people are just products of their environment. The environment you grow around will really impact who you are as a person with like your personality, interests, etc, etc. By studying a variety of different environments it can help you figure out what sorts of stuff you want to include in your world. And I like to keep a lot of things about my comic a secret, but I'll say this. The aesthetic of the world that I have is like, I guess kind of odd. <laughs> like the architecture and everything seems a lot more old. Like it's not modern architecture, but then there's technology. So that's like a mix of that because I really liked the, is the juxtaposition the right word? I, I like the contrast between those two. And by studying like different types of architecture and different types of technology throughout the years, I was able to craft my own thing. And of course there are certain elements that aren't from real life and those didn't come from studying realism. Dude, disrespectful. This, this, look, look at this dude. What is this dude? Since my story doesn't take place in the real world, not everything is from realism, but definitely certain aspects of it are like architecture and like city layouts and building layouts and everything like that. It's from studying actual real life stuff. Now, obviously, if you were to ask me, I would say use reference photos, study from real life, all that fun stuff, but I, sometimes it's not as simple as me just saying that. Some people just quite literally do not know how to go about it. So here's what I will challenge you all to do. Think of one thing that you want to get better at drawing. It could be a person, it could be an animal, it could be an object, it could be anything. Just one thing you want to get better at drawing and then find reference photos of that. Save them to a Pinterest board, save them to your phone, screenshot it, whatever. Do whatever you need to do to get the photos. And it can be very overwhelming to just sit down and draw those things. So think about one thing that you want to improve on by copying those reference photos. It could be the object, it's, it could be the subject matter itself, in which case you would focus a lot more on breaking it down into its basic shapes. It could be about perspective, in that case you would be focusing on angles and depth, and it could, you would be focusing on how things relate to each other, just anything really. Because what you want out of studying a certain photo will really change your approach to it. I talked about that in my 100 heads challenge. In that video, the main thing that I wanted to focus on was facial structure. And so to do that, I sketched with pen because I didn't want to focus too much on a medium that I was using and making that part look good. Like if I was using watercolors, I wouldn't want to focus on making the watercolors look good. I would want to focus on making the face structure accurate. And like, let's say I wanted to practice capturing likeness, I would probably have gone for pencil because capturing likeness can be a difficult thing. And so I would give myself the ability to erase so I can actually work on doing that properly. Think about what you want to get when you're copying a certain reference photo. Don't just copy it blindly. Think of what you actually want to gain and then go from there. You could fill a whole sketchbook spread of you copying reference photos of that thing and then let's say on the next spread you try and put your own creative spin on it. Like if you're an illustrator like me you will try to draw that thing in your art style. Think of parts of your art style that are consistent throughout various things I guess you could say. Like for me line art is a big thing so I would say how would I ink this specific object that I just learned how to draw. And how can I make that line art look consistent with all of my other line art? I hope that made sense. I tried to make it as coherent as possible, but you know me, <laughs> not always the most coherent person on this platform. So comment down below if you have any questions. I'll definitely do my best to answer them. And also because in this video, I wasn't talking about the actual painting itself. I wanted to put this in here so I can show you guys her reaction to the painting because that's what I did with the other two. So here's that. I swear to God, she better be appreciative. Lily, come to the living room. Show, I gotta show you what I got for you. Lily, stop eating so much food, you fatty. What did you say to my daughter? Look what I made you. Look. Oh my God, she's more interested than the other ones. She sniffed it once. Come here, Lily. Look. 
No, get back here. Lily. 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 Where are you going? Don't mix eggs. I'm sad. Disrespectful. Thank you. No. No! And I think that that's about all I have for you today. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you thought of the painting, if you thought I gave good advice, and also if you have advice of your own about this topic, comment down below. I'm sure people reading the comments would really appreciate that. And if you are new here, hello, my name is Oliver. I post a new video here every single Wednesday. So if you liked this art or if you want to see more of my illustrative stuff, which is most of what I draw, then consider subscribing. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you also want to see more from me and more of my art, you can follow me on Instagram, preferably. But if not other places, that's also acceptable but I am most active on Instagram. That is where I post my art, etc, etc. Links will be in the description box below. Go follow me over those places. And there will also be some videos on screen now and linked in the iCard feed to check out if you want. Again, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.